Look at that stud of a rainbow. Wow. What a beautiful fish. Incredible. He's heavy. <laughs> Super heavy. Wow. Very nice. Howdy guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, it is snowing here in the Sierra foothills. We are right in the middle of a four day storm. It's been raining, it's been blowing, and uh, just about an hour ago, that rain turned into snow. So, of course, I'm not fishing today. I'm hanging out, I'm working in my garage, I'm working on some gear, working on some video and stuff like that. Now, last week, you might have caught the video I put out about preparing shrimp baits for targeting muddy water trout. Well, with these conditions, I can absolutely tell you when I get back up to Collins Lake, I'm going to be dealing with muddy, cold water. And in that shrimp video, I talked about how I was going to fish the shrimp bait underneath a slip bobber. And uh, well, that's what I'm going to be doing today. I randomly grabbed one of my rods out of the garage, and I'm going to show you how to rig up with a slip bobber. And, uh, you know, this is a, a fairly modern rig compared to what we used to use for slip bobber fishing. So let's get started. I think you'll find this informative. You should know how to rig up a bottom fishing bait, you know, a sliding sinker bait. I, I did a video about that about 10 days ago or so, how I fish power bait. Well, this is definitely the follow up on that. This is how you can suspend a trout bait at any depth with a rig that's easy to cast and a rig that's very capable of landing a large fish. Let's get started. So first things first, this is one of my four piece spinning rods. Um, I've got an Abu Garcia reel. I'm spooled up with 15 pound braid. Um, no top shot on this rig. I don't want a top shot. A lot of times when I'm fishing bait, I'll use a top shot of fluorocarbon line, but fluorocarbon line sinks. And I want my line when I'm fishing a slip bobber either to float or to have kind of neutral buoyancy. If the, if the line sags down in the water column, it's just not gonna help you. It's gonna hinder the way that your bobber floats. It's gonna hinder your bait's ability to sink down to a, to a given depth, particularly if you're fishing eight or 10 feet deep. So. Um, let me pull this off here. These are essential, just a simple rod cover, not so much to protect the rod, but to keep all my rods from tangling together because I've got like 10 spinning rods I'm using right now. And if I don't have these, they will tie themselves in a knot and I will go absolutely nuts trying to untangle that mess. So if you haven't seen these or you don't have any of these, Amazon come right from China guys. They're like, I don't know. I, I just got a package of them. I think I got 12 of them for $15. So rock on these are awesome they'll save you a lot of frustration so let's just slide this off toss it over the railing here so as i said 15 pound braided line this is fins doesn't matter which brand of braid you use it's going to have a pretty neutral level of buoyancy it's actually probably going to float unless you know you've got wind and and some some waves are breaking on the line and stuff like that so here we go um I don't know if I said that or not. This is one of my four piece spinning rods. It's a fast action rod, fairly fast action. It's light enough for trout, but it has a fairly fast action. And that's important because I'm gonna be casting that slip bobber along with a bait and a weight and all that stuff. I don't want a real wimpy noodle rod. A lot of rods will work. Just make sure you're having a rod that has a fairly fast action, anywhere from six and a half feet long to eight feet long. Anything in that range is gonna work. Um, Abu Garcia reel, 15 pound braid. I think I've said that like four times now. Here we go. Let me set the rod down. Let me get my scissors. First things first, I'm gonna cut, I just had a loop on there to keep track of things. Let me cut that off nice and clean right there. And uh, let me show you what I've got, you know, sitting around here to rig. Of course, I have a scissors for cutting the braid. I have my rigging box here. It's got snaps and jig heads, bobber stops, all that stuff and more. Um, that's just everything I need to rig up for jigging fruit trout, using a slip bobber, using a slot, uh, slip bobber combined with a jig, whatever. Very compact set of tackle there. Doesn't need to be, you know, a wide array of tackle, but you do need quite a few components when you go out bait fishing for trout. So take more than you need and you're not gonna be lacking something out on the water. So there's my components. There is my slip bobber right there. This isn't one of those old school foam bobbers. 
This is actually a bobber um, aimed more at the steelhead and salmon fishing community. I love these. You can see it's a sponge bobber and it is rated to float a half an ounce. So as long as I keep my bait and sinker combination below a half an ounce, I should get a nice true float with this. So let's rig up. First thing I'm gonna do is put a bobber stop on my line. I'm gonna be, be leaning in and out of the frame here because I gotta grab stuff. In this case, because I'm gonna be casting a lot, I'm going to use a string bobber stop just like that they come pre-tied they're on a, a hollow piece of plastic and here's what you do with that and we grab grab the end of my line catch up with that set my scissors right there so you just simply take your line find the end of it and your line pass that through that plastic tube just like so and then slide that string knot off that tube onto your main line. My fingers are cold and kind of kind of makes them stupid, so I'm having a little bit of a challenging time getting that to slide off there, but there it goes, it's starting to go. Here we go, just work it off there. Okay, it's about to flop right off the end of that. So there we go, it is off. Now pull the little plastic piece off. Don't litter the bank with that. If you're out on the lake doing this but to put that away and then you'll see you have two tag ends on that string just start pulling on them equally bring that knot down nice and even and what that's going to act as that's going to act as a stop to control your depth it will slide up and down your line and uh, you could tighten it down pretty good it might loosen up throughout the day so what you want to do is not trim all the tag end off. I like to leave a good, oh, quarter, three eighths of an inch. So I'll trim that like that. And uh, I'll trim this side about the same, like that. And that allows me to grab it later on and retighten that knot if it loosens up. So with the bobber stop in place, what we're gonna do is we need to slide a bead on right below that, one of these tiny, tiny beads that comes with the bobber stops. So, and if you're old and blind like me, that's a tiny bead with a tea tiny little hole in it. There's the hole right there. I'm gonna thread this through there, so bear with me. First try, he does it, he does it. Old guys, we still got it. Look no further than Tom Brady, first try guys. <laughs> anyway, I'm all excited. So we'll slide that down now. I like to put a second bead on there because the way that you you can tell if your rig has, has sunk down to the proper depth is you can see if that bead is resting firmly right on top of that bobber. And if I'm using a little microscopic bead like that, I can't see that from much distance at all. So what I'll do is I'll take a good size, I don't know, I got, a, I got like a faceted plastic bright ruby red bead right there. I'll slide that on the line next. Okay, so, so that's something I can see when it ends up on top of the bobber when I'm fishing. So with that in place, it's time to put your line through the bobber and uh, shoot it right there. Again, it's a tiny little hole and braided line is pretty soft, so it might not like to go through there real easy, but I'll show you a trick, you just suck on it. Okay, so there we go. I've got the line through the slip bobber, and as you can see right there, this we're in the down position while we're fishing, the bobber stop is right there, and it's stopping the bobber, or the float, from going up any higher. Those beads are jamming against it. Of course, my bait would be down here below it. And uh, let's get on with that part. Now, I'm gonna slide a bead on here to protect my knot from the bobber hitting it. And I could tip this with a swivel and then add a couple split shot for weight. But uh, instead of doing that, I'm gonna use one of my trolling sinkers that has the swivels integrated. And I've tipped that trolling swivel with a little uh, lock snap 
just to make it easier to take on and off leaders. So I'm just going to put this through the, the top eye of that uh, trolling snap. And I'm just going to use a simple improved clinch, uh, clinch knot, a fisherman's knot, same thing. I'm going to go about seven, eight wraps right there. Slip the line through here. Come back through there. If you guys don't know how to tie this knot, look for improved clinch knot. I've got uh, demos on my channel. You can find them on other channels. But uh, if you've been fishing for long, you know how to tie that knot. That's one of the very basic knots that we use all the time. So I'm going to grab that tag end with my teeth. Slide it down. Nice and firm. Now I'm going to leave a little bit of a tag end, about a quarter of an inch. Just like that. So there we have that. We have our weight hanging below the slip bobber um, with a bead providing a little bit of space between that bobber and the knot. There's our bobber stop there. Let's put on a leader and uh, then I'll show you how to adjust this for depth. Now I have several leaders in my pocket all tied and ready to go and uh, I'm actually going to use one of my European carp hooks on this rig because I'll show you the hook here. Let me spiral the, the leader off here. I just sit around in the evening and tie a whole bunch of these and put them on a piece of foam pool noodle. So let me show you this hook. I'll show you why I'm using this hook as opposed to a standard octopus hook. Now this shape, this hook is shaped a little bit like an octopus hook because it has an up eye, but it's also shaped a little bit like a bait holder hook. And right back here, it has two bait holding barbs. And that's gonna work really well keeping a night crawler or a piece of shrimp in place on the hook because I want that hook point exposed. I want the bait sitting along the shank of the hook and those two bait holder barbs are gonna help me accomplish that. So to set this leader up, I always make them a little long. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop it off there at about 20 inches. I'm gonna tie it just an overhand loop knot up here in the top end of that leader, just like so. Just ease that down, trim off the tag end. And again, I'm not gonna um, trim it super short. I'm gonna leave about a quarter of an inch there. Just, that's my insurance against slipping. If I get a big fish on or I get tangled or whatever. So now I have a loop in the top of the leader. There's the hook there. I'm gonna go ahead, grab the bobber set up, open up that snap on the bottom end of the sinker, put that loop in the snap, snap that in place, and uh, I am ready to fish. There's my hook right, right there. I can bait that up with a piece of night crawler, a piece of shrimp, whatever, and then I can adjust how deep I'm fishing using the bobber stop. The distance from the bobber stop to the hook, well, that's how far I'm gonna be fishing down. If I wanna fish four feet down, I put that bobber stop 48 inches from the hook and uh, I'll fish that deep. If I wanna fish deeper, say I wanna fish 12 feet, 15 feet, same thing. Place that bobber stop 12 feet from that hook and your bait, when everything sinks down, is gonna be 12 feet down. And because I'm using that string bobber stop, I can reel that right through the eyes of the rod. I can reel it into the reel if I want, if I'm going deep, you know, if I've got a significant amount of line. You know, at Collins Lake, the fish are all shallow, so I'm probably gonna be fishing, you know, four feet deep, five feet deep max. But as simple as that, this one is rigged and ready to go. I'll reel that up and uh, Slip the, the rod cover back on here right over the bobber. I'll adjust that depth or I'll fine tune that depth when I get out to the lake. But that's how you set up a slip bobber rig for trout fishing. It's very versatile. If you only knew, if you only know two rigs for, for bait fishing, um, for trout in lakes and reservoirs, whether you're fishing from a boat or from the bank, one, you want to be able to tie that Carolina style power bait rig that I showed you oh, about 10 days ago in another video. And you want to be able to rig up the slip bobber. This allows you to present baits anywhere in the, in the water column. If you've got the wind right, you can use it to float a bait way offshore or way up inside a cove 
whatever very versatile the only thing you really don't want to use with this is a floating bait if you if you rig that up with see a ball of power bait that floats up it's going to want to float up onto your line all the time and get tangled but any kind of sinking bait whether you're going with a worm a piece of shrimp um, a mice a mouse tail mice tail from power bait a jig anything like that is going to work very well with the slip bobber rig i'm kel kellogg i'm getting cold i'm signing off for now i'm gonna go play around in my garage a little bit and get in get in front of the fire i will catch you later right here on youtube if you're looking for gear fishhuntshoot.com that's where you'll find these four-piece spinning rods and more i'm kel kellogg